Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Right. Happy Friday. Today is the 8th. This will come out on the 8th. And the State of the Union was yesterday. That's so exciting. Yeah. I love it when a plan comes together. And why is politics important for small business owners? I mean, we know it is. What's politics, right? These are the folks running our country. And why do small business owners give a shit? Well, should small business owners care about uh, illegal aliens running across the border? Should they care about uh, men who used to be women with swimming and swim meets in high school? <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> Good These grief. are not the things that you should be thinking about as a small business owner. You, know. yeah. you should care about taxes, right? That's pretty important. Um and what else does the government do for you? Oh, yeah. Interest rates. Taxes, interest rates. Those are the most important things a small business owner cares about. There's two levers that can change your fate economically. Yeah. I would and say guess who decides these stupid things, right? The people in office, right? These guys that run the country every four years. And they're all the folks that they bring in that are, create this ecosystem around them. Yeah. And then, you know, to a larger degree, also the party that they're part of, right? Or, or the party that they don't want to be part of, uh, as is the case probably with Donald Trump. But, you know, yesterday's address gives you a pretty good look at Joe Biden the last four years and what he's hoping to accomplish if he's reelected and what this might mean for small business owners. And I think also gives us a look into why we are where we are. Right? Why are we in this crazy, contentious time period in American history? Um, and what does it mean? Right? I think we came from a place where Republicans used to be the party that ran the country. Right? Uh, I think when you were young, you were a Democrat, you were idealistic, you liked to do drugs, and you believed that you know you could change things. And then you grew up and you became a Republican because you learn that, you know, you kind of like things the way you like them, right? You don't love change. You don't necessarily want to be doing a lot of drugs. Um, and so people naturally made this progression. Um, and historically, I think in America, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, Republicans controlled commodities, right? The industries that seemed like they mattered, you know, oil, food, water, yeah. right? Gas, those were the big businesses. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so then, and then they the were the rich. They were the rich. And then the internet came. And turned the shit upside down. Oh. And it will not stop. Mm -mm. And so you have the 80s. Let's think about, you know, what did the 80s look like? How much did a house cost? 100 grand. 100 grand. And how much did a relatively successful person make? Hundred grand. I would say hundred grand. Same yeah, thing. house a hundred grand. You make about a hundred grand as a successful person. Yeah. And what was the biggest company in America? Chevron. I don't know. Worth thirty billion dollars. Yeah. And maybe by the nineties, it was worth a hundred billion dollars. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Let's think about that today, right? In Joe Biden's America. Yeah. What's the biggest company in the in the world? What's the, that worth? Is the biggest company Amazon? Amazon, Microsoft, one Google. Of, one of these, yeah. Who cares? Three trillion dollars. But nothing to do with petroleum. Nothing to do with commodities. Nothing to do with commodities. All, everything to do with technology and information. Right. Three trillion dollars, right? So 30 billion, was that a hundred times more yeah. than it was in the 80s? That's fucking, that's crazy to wrap your mind around. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to see if you can answer this. Not to derail you. So remember where you were. Oh, yeah. I'm there. What was the largest business at the turn of the 20th? Not this last one, but at the turn of the 20th century. What's the largest business in America? I mean, this was before the Rockefellers, right? This is like... Uh, this is early 1900s. Like right, this is before the Industrial Revolution. So this is like some kind of joke. This is like, uh, I forget, but is it like uh, people who make uh, saddles for horses or something? Yeah, you're spot on. It's the American Saddle Company. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. How did I know that? Yeah. I, it, I mean, that's a good point. Amazing. Yeah. Gnarly. I pulled that out of my ass. Yeah, but it's true, right? Yeah. I don't think a lot of people sort of understand or commit to this harsh reality that times do change, that hierarchies 
do change, that heads of state end up getting their heads cut off, right? A lot. A lot. A lot. And so that kind of brings us full circle kind of what we're talking about today, that like things do change, right? And the who was sitting at the top of the hierarchy in the 80s and even the 90s aren't sitting there anymore. And that has permeated, right, into all corners of society, right? Yep. Three trillion dollars, a hundred times more than any of these largest companies in America were worth um, 40 years ago. Yeah. But let's think about you, right? The viewer. Are you making a hundred times more than you did in the 80s? Is anyone making a hundred times more besides like, you know, the executives or the top employees of some of these tech companies? Yeah, I don't think so. What about small business owners? Or is any small business like a restaurant, is that worth a hundred times more than it was? Not at all. What about a house? How much is the house worth? Maybe five times more? Yeah. Well, I think, again, again, this goes back to at the turn of the 20th century, right? You could buy a home for like $2,000. You fast forward today and Sailor, you know who I'm talking about? Yep. What's his first name? Is it Michael? Michael Sailor. Michael Sailor owns a home that cost $100 million, but a hundred years ago, that house cost two thousand dollars. So, yeah, amazing. Wh- so why has that changed? Right? It has nothing to do with the price of land. It just has everything to do with the the spending power of the dollar. Yep. And so it's the asset inflation that's been created by the various administrations that have been in place. And that's why again we go back to this important speech that's given once a year and why small business owners should pay attention. But yeah, when you're running a small business and you realize how bigness has benefited the biggest companies in America and how smallness has not benefited anyone, right, who remains a small business owner in the U.S., um, it makes you wake up and pay attention. And you look at, the, at who controls the country and you better wake up and understand that the companies that have valuations of one trillion, two trillion, three trillion dollars are pushing the politicians around. And let's think about it. Who runs tech companies? Is it the Republicans or the Democrats? What kinds of people work inside of technology companies? Well, I think it's funny. I think the the answer to that, right, nominally would be the woke left. Absolutely. But what you start to see is that there's cracks in that foundation, that there are people, Mm -hmm. right, that are older. They're not as young, but they're older, right? Within those companies that are like, wait a second, I don't align with this. And I know that kind of like derails what you're talking about, but yeah, overwhelmingly disproportionately. So the people that run these companies, these large tech companies are, um, not liberal in the classical sense. No, no, no. And they, you know, it, it makes sense. It's the defund. If you're a computer programmer, right? Mm. If you're a creative person, you probably don't have the same brain that I do, right? I'm a conservative person by nature, right? It wouldn't take you analyzing more than three clicks of my internet history or my Instagram to understand that I probably would not vote uh, for the left. Um, It's not complicated. I like things the way they are. I don't love change. Uh, but technology is change. And so everyone who's running these companies um, is much more aligned with more left-leaning policies. Yeah. Um, and if you didn't... Wait, you know, what are the left-leaning policies? Are you willing to say that on TV? Well, I mean, I think... Let's go left, through them. Top three. Top three. Well, I mean, you got at the top, right? You have economic utopia. Okay. which is the redistribution of wealth. Okay. So like just to give people an understanding, universal basic income like UBI, that's probably one of them. I think that's a nice thing. <laughs> they, they it's might like believe. a spectrum. Okay. Yeah, that okay. might be on the like the the really <laughs> sweet end of leftist policies. So keep UBI. Going, so keep going left. What's more left than the UBI? Oh, we we can go much further, right? Which is like the idea that this money that I make um, doesn't really belong to me. How about some guilt associated with making that money? Oh, that's great. Um, am I, am I, am I, am I poking that I was just the fact that I was born intelligent enough to make this amount of money is unfair for everyone. 
All right. And we should just give it away to the people that go to prison, stab people, um, rape people, okay. you know, so, stuff like so that. So adjacent to this feeling of guilt, right, is defund the police. Anti, oh, yeah, that's one anti, of those sick ideas. Anti-colonialism. Sure. Um, guilt. Guilt. Right, about like the color of your skin Rep- or where you were born. Reparations, right, yeah. with respect to black people, right? I know in California they're trying to pass um, a law about that. Um, yeah, which would be fine if you could only figure out, you know, who did it and who should benefit. But well, they can't the pr- figure out either. I think the problem with California and why a lot of people are opposed to it is, one, California was not a slave state. Right. Two, there's a mass immigration of black people into California from other states. Uh, and those people may or may not have been, right, um, affected by slavery, right? You have the Mason-Dixon line that's separated, right? Uh, slavery from, you know, from freedom, right? So, you know, if somebody is in Ohio and then they move to California in 1968, should they get the same type of reparations as someone who moved from Biloxi, Mississippi? Yeah, oh. and without getting too crazy with it, right? Again, these ideas are utopian. But that's the point. Economic right. or social ideas. Right. And I get it, right? The left, right? And technology folks live in a world of fantasy. Yeah. And I love Because that. they program their own reality. Yeah. And it comes true. And it comes true. And it comes true. It's amazing. Right? And it comes with large amounts of money. Huge amounts. So they're conditioned. The biggest amounts of money. Yeah. So they're conditioned. But of course, the head of NVIDIA just said that the, <laughs> the prospect of computer programmers in the future, right, kind of ruling the world, it looks kind of bleak. Because AI is probably going to replace them. Because it's going to happen. Because these large language models are going to be able to program in English. So yeah. Pretty so wild we stuff. can go through it now that we have some background on why we are where we are, which is the rise of technology giving way to more left leaning political policies. And in a capitalist system, we have more of a one dollar one vote system than we do a one person one vote. And when you have trillions and trillions of dollars con- controlled by technology companies, the CEOs and the executives of those companies happen to be a little bit more left leaning. You've got a big shift that's taken place in America, where the average family is making maybe five to ten x what they did forty years ago, but businesses that are involved in technology are worth what we talked about, right? 30 times, a hundred times or more than they were at that time. And so you've got some dislocations uh, and some hard feelings going on. And so we can look at, let's look at Joe Biden's speech from last night. It's pretty interesting. I got to open my iPad. And some of the stuff that uh, President Joe said, Grandpa Joe, and he really is, he's really fucking old. Uh, let's look at number one. This is my list of really dumb shit Joe Biden said in the State of the Union address. Not since President Lincoln and the Civil War have freedom and democracy been under assault here at home as they are today. Uh, ding, ding, ding. Really, really dumb thing to say. Super divisive uh, and awful, right? We have to look at the Civil War to compare where we are today. I mean, I think that's offensive. 1860 to 1865. That was a little while ago. Eh, you know. Yeah. Long time ago last week. Yeah. Um, ju- just doing that, right, is already pretty annoying no matter what side of the spectrum you're on, right? I like presidents that unify. I like presidents that bring people together. And that is not bring anyone together. Ask me who my favorite president was. Who's your favorite president? Bill Clinton. Oh, that guy's great. He's fantastic. And you're not a Democrat, right? No, you're not what I'm anyone not. would think of as a Democrat. I'm a classical liberal, right? I believe in freedoms. I'm cl- I'm a lot closer to um to uh, a libertarian than I am to 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 either end of the spectrum. You think so? Yeah, but I think Clinton was great. I think the things that Clinton passed during his presidency were amazing. He was a Democrat president, fantastic, phenomenal speaker. Very, very touchy feely. Love that guy. Um, but let the touch, let the touch the elbows. 
grab with one hand. Oh, he grabbed get, other. He grabbed other grabbed stuff. A few other things. He liked to so. slice a peach right down the middle. Ooh. Bradley said that. I was so it. turned on. <laughs> um, yeah, we were at, at dinner with Bradley. He said that. I was so turned on. Um, but President Clinton was amazing, and most notably so because he was a Democrat president with a Republican Congress and still passed one of the most meaningful pieces of modern legislation, which is aid to families with dependent children, right? The way it used to be, we used to pay mothers who didn't have jobs, mm. right? More money based off of how many kids they would have. What an incentive. A weird incentive, <laughs> a weird incentive. Although in countries like China and Korea and Japan and Russia, they're starting to do that to, to do that or adopt policies centered around this concept because their birth rates are too low. Yeah, they're plunging. Right? They're plunging. Yeah. So they're having problems. Populations are going away. Yeah. But you know, paying people from the government, right? More money based off of how poor they are and how many kids they would have hmm. um was not a smart thing to do. So yeah. I just I like presidents who can unify. This speech was very divisive. Yeah. Let's not let's not go back three hundred years to try to compare where we've gotten to, right? I mean, it'd be one thing if he was comparing us to the 70s with the Vietnam War, if he was comparing us to World War II, yeah. where I'm sure there were disagreements, right? You got, uh, Ger uh, not Gerald, <laughs> you got uh, Ford, right? The guy who uh, created the Model T. Uh, what was his first name? Henry. I hate him, yeah. Damn Henry Ford. Guy. Thank Huge you, Huge Nazi, by the way. Huge Nazi, right? You got that guy writing stories about the evil of Jews yeah. in his own newspaper, right? In a country that's about to go to war with Nazi Germany. Yeah. So you're talking, you want me to think about the civil war? There's yeah. plenty of divisive periods in American history. Yeah. Right. So yeah, that's number one, right? Like what are you doing for small business owners? You want, you want a country that's united. Yeah. Right. And that, that knows where it's going. Uh, and you don't want leaders who are trying to drag the two, halves of America up further apart from each other. I think it's, it's a good point. And we can, we can skip to the next point, but I would say this, when you're in a presidential cycle and you're the incumbent, you generally have the advantage. Generally incumbents aren't dethroned historically yeah. speaking. Not this time. Yeah. Not this time. I think we, I think we understand that there is no incumbent in this election. Pretty 50, 50, 50, 50. So if it's no 50, 50, why not appeal to both parties? Why not appeal to your own party, which I think he struggles with, right? Specifically because of his Israel policies. But why not also appeal to the moderate on the the moderates on the right? Bring them together. Use this speech as an example to unify, as opposed to grow the divide larger and larger. And that's all I wanted to say with regard to point two, yeah. or uh, point one rather. And again, we're going to be using direct quotes, so uh, this isn't anything we're making up. This is exactly what Joe Biden said last night. Uh, if anybody in this room thinks Putin will stop to, at Ukraine, I assure you, he will not. Another zinger. Like, what are we trying to accomplish here? Uh, we're trying to, what is this, kick sleeping dogs? Uh, swat beehives? What's try, the point of this? Try that fucking tone with she. <laughs> yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Why didn't you say this about she? Yeah. Pussy. Yeah, he, he, you know, he <laughs> wanted to get a little into, uh, you know, in this speech about China, yeah. but he, he really put his sights more directly on Putin, which I think is stupid. Yeah. Who is he trying to get excited about this? Is his democratic base excited about more war, global war? You know, historically speaking, and I hate to say this because I'm not, a, I'm not a, a Democrat and I'm not a Republican. Like I said, I'm, I'm more of a libertarian, but most people think, and I've said this in a previous podcast, Lev, most people think that Republicans are more bellicose than their Democrat counterparts. But in fact, historically speaking, when you look back, it's the Democrats that get the United States into wars. Kind of crazy, but I'll put it out there. Comment yeah. down. Well, GW, right, got us into some some hot water in Iraq. I don't remember that but. war. What, who, who was that against? <laughs> <laughs> this is i think it was uh josh josh is north yeah. african dean well i mean he kind of looks like uday or kuse oh, or one goodness. of those guys all right transitioning back to point two <laughs> you know putin's not i i think a fair point right from joe biden's perspective which is russia is trying to unify right 
under the Russian flag, right? USSR has gone away. He's trying to unify all of these former Soviet republics back into the fold of Russia. And I think that scares people. And so his point about not stopping with Ukraine is it, you know, it harkens back to this Cold War era where you have two countries that are both, you know, not willing to pull the trigger. They're, they're both pointing a gun, right, at each other. And it's, 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 a, it's a nuclear detente, right? They're waiting for the other one to pull the trigger. But it is mutually assured destruction, right, yeah. if they do that. I think, you know, looking at it from Putin's perspective, he wants to bring back, right, the day where Russia was unified. And I don't know if I fault him for that, right? When you have a people that are, that all speak the same language. I know Ukrainians like to pretend they don't speak Russian, but they do. They do. But when you want to unify a country of people that are really all the same, right? That all yearn to be part of the same group. I don't know if that's a fault. I really don't know if that's a fault. In China, you have five kingdoms that are unified into one, right? Right. And you had in America, you have 50 states. Better point. M- m- a way better point. Is Texas so different than Arkansas? Yeah. And think about how we'd feel if Texas really decided it was going to break off tomorrow. Yeah. I, I think we would do the same thing Putin would do. Yeah. All right. We'd send troops in there yeah. and show them who's boss. Yeah. Say, no, thanks. You guys are staying. Um, yeah. And listen, when the Cold War started, Well, I shouldn't say when the Cold War started, but I should say that when NATO, right, and Russia made this agreement back in the day, the USSR, right, they said they weren't going to push on the boundaries of the Soviet Union. And and NATO... Which is true. Yeah. And NATO has gone against that, namely because of the United States. So they've pushed and encroached into what was formerly the Soviet Union, right, and basically fortified... I don't want to say fortified borders, but essentially like created false borders, right? And 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 the U.S. likes to, especially the Democrats like to say, they're not this imperialistic country, but really that's what they're doing with NATO, right? Yeah. It's, and none of that makes Putin a nice guy. But it, What do you mean by that? Right. So I'm speaking from the, the United States perspective, like they're encroaching onto Russian territory. Right. And so we're just saying that Putin's not wrong about NATO doing this, well, which I'm, doesn't make him a nice guy, right? He also has a lot of policies that he does, right? Yeah. That he pushes in his own country yeah. that are not good for his people, but that's irrelevant to the point about Ukraine, yeah. which is that that war needs to end. Um, and I think there's a big portion of voters from the 2020 election yeah. um, that were pushed away from Trump for a variety of reasons. I was one of them. Um, I didn't enjoy those four years and I thought something else might be better. And I know a lot of military folks that felt the same way. Yeah. And I think that if you're a current person serving in the U S military or maybe a veteran, I think you've probably had enough after these four years, these Um, four years or the Trump four years after these four years, I think that if you were, feeling a little bit let down by Trump during his term. Right. And you've seen what the Biden's capable of, the alternative. Right. I think you now understand uh, which is worse. Listen, there are a lot of examples, right? When Trump was president, it was like, fuck Venezuela, right? Yeah. Fuck Maduro. And then Biden comes back and he's like, all right, let's soften our stance on communism. Um, let's extend an, extend an olive branch to Maduro. Yeah, you know, a few years ago, they invited who the U.S. installed as president in Venezuela. I don't know if you remember that, but it was during a State of the Union. They had him there. Ooh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, so and and it's and then it failed because the populace in Venezuela are pro Maduro, right? And they have a lot of oil and gas, right? I think some of the largest reserves outside of Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Right. So it's like, you know, what you start to realize is that, and, and I hate saying this because it's going to offend people's sensibilities. No, we're, we're good there. We're good there. Yeah. We've already offended that. It has less to do with politics, has more to do with corporations. And I think when the oil and gas industries get their 
their man, their Manchurian candidate into office, which I do think Biden is the Manchurian candidate, hmm. right? It's, it's, it's less about policies as you can see, right? There's been a lot of like very like distinct pivots from like, um, you know, fuck Venezuela, right? And, and we will install a new, a new person down there. We will democratize these lands. And it's like, well, but they do have a lot of oil and gas and we'd like that. And that's kind of the play with Iraq, you know, in, with, with George W, which was like, hey, they got, you know, they got, uh, they got some uh, weapons of mass destruction, right? Let's go get, let's, let's, let's go install Chevron and Exxon, right? Royal Shell. Let's, let's make some money from that. Yeah. And, and Joe may be a Manchurian candidate, but Trump is kind of the opposite, right? He's the one everyone believes is not the Manchurian candidate. Meanwhile, one dollar one vote continues. Yeah. Meanwhile, trillions and trillions of dollars are controlled by the largest technology companies in the world that we know and understand are creating a more left leaning America. Yeah. Right. And creating prosperity among the people that work there. Um, and that affects our political system. And it's leading to some rifts that I think in the next six months, people are going to say are going to lead to some kind of revolution, revolt, insurrection, whatever it is. They're going to stoke the fears of the population prior to the election and make people scared. And, and I think that's a scary prospect in itself. I think we're going to be fine, though. I think we're always going to be fine. And Joe Biden last night didn't help with that. Right. And we're going over these examples. They're live examples of him not helping to not stoke these fires. Um, you know, again, talking about, you know, the Civil War being somehow related to the current time period, you know, that Putin won't stop at Ukraine. Yeah. And then he gets into his normal shtick, which is, you know, we talk about some great comeback story in Belvedere, Illinois, home to an auto plant for 60 years. The UAW worked like hell to keep the plant open, get those jobs back. Showing once again, Wall Street didn't build this country. The middle class built this country and unions built the middle class. That's a huge crock of shit. Yeah. What, a, what nonsense. I think one of the greatest terrorists in America, formally, I know you probably think where, you think you know where I'm going with this. You think it's the Abraham Lincoln part? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't um, think you're going there. No, I listen. Shit. Yeah. Well, listen, Ken Fisher taught me that. Actually, I'm talking about Samuel Gompers, which what is the one of the most terroristic lawyers, I think mm -hmm. in American history. And, and you can, you can fact check me on this if you want to, but I think the, um, the introduction, the implementation, the execution of, of, um, trade unions has been one of the most disruptive things to our democracy. They act like they protect, right. The workers, um, and this is like a 20th century type policy or whatever, because yeah, it's outdated. It's, it, it really, I mean, it's as outdated as putting senators and Congress people in DC, hoping that they represent the populace back in their home state. I'm good. Or letting them work until they're, you know, into their nineties, eighties and nineties. I'm good. I mean, with regards to, and clip this up, Lev, you know, a transition from, the modern form of sort of representational democracy that we currently enjoy to a more technology based one. I know it sounds scary because we know who controls these technology companies, but I don't think I need Diane Feinstein RIP by the way. Um, or right. The modern version of Diane Feinstein, which is either Adam Schiff in California or well, that guy's disgusting, right? I, I don't listen. I don't know what type of stuff Steve Garvey does. Right. But he's, you know, Adam Schiff could be just as disgusting as Steve Garvey. But the point is, why do we need these people? No. If there's legislation that needs to get passed in DC with respect to my home state or my state, I'll go on my cell phone. Right. Just like I do on DoorDash and Uber Eats. And I'll be like, all right, let me read through what this is about. Here are the talking points. My vote this is not what the founding fathers wanted. Yeah. Yay, <laughs> nay, abstain. Yeah. And I'm voting. I don't need. I don't need some idiot that won ASB president or something in DC for in 40 1943. Years. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> so I just love, you'll clip that up. I, I have some real issues with the modern form of representational democracy, but I also have some real problems with trade unions. I think it's a scam. Yeah. And, and look at what, look what Biden's saying. Showing once again, Wall Street didn't build this country. A future where the days of trickle down economics are over 
and the wealthy and biggest corporations no longer get all the breaks. Oh, Jesus. What sort of nonsense is that? That's exactly what's happening right now. Explain to me how trickle-down economics, which is like a Reagan thing, explain to me how Reaganomics isn't exactly what happens today, right? If you pay, right, if you pay computer programmers in, which San Francisco is no longer one of the most expensive cities in America, it's now Mountain View, I think. That came out yesterday. But if you pay a computer programmer at Netflix a half a million dollars a year, is he just going to take all that money and save it and never spend it? Yeah. Or is he going to buy a house, a car, all these consumerism, right? Like goods and services. Doesn't that trickle down to the Uber driver that's delivering him, you know, his Wendy's? It does. And, you know, they want to blame people. But and here we can see he's blaming the rich. Uh, but the reality is that the system has created, right, the the political and economic system we live in has created these dislocations that yeah. neither the Republicans nor the Democrats are responsible for. Somebody was just interviewing. But he Jan- wants to blame somebody for it. Somebody was just interviewing Janet Yellen about Walmart on the same topic. Oh, yeah. Did you see this? No. And they were saying like, you know, Walmart has this tremendous revenue pay zero federal income tax. They p- provide this amazing, what do you call it, to their investors, to their shareholders. They deliver this tremendous value to their, uh, sure. to their investors. Returns investor, and dividends. To the dividends, to, to this point about dividends specifically. But why don't those dividends, and this is the reporter asking, why don't those, rep- why don't those dividends go to the not just the shareholders, but the workers? And I think when you, at 10,000 feet... When you look at the system we have, it seems fair and equitable, right? The system of, cap, you know, uh, the modern form of capitalism that we currently have. But what the reporter was arguing with Janet Yellen specifically about this Walmart example was the workers aren't benefiting from this behemoth, right, um, that they work for. They get a wage, but they don't get much more than that. And the dividend, right, and the returns go to the shareholders. But yet the largest subset, if you will, of people that benefit from financial aid from the federal government, right? Food stamps, et cetera, are all Walmart, Walmart employees, <laughs> right? And that was their point. And, and, no. and Janet Yellen defended this point, which is they're delivering the returns to the shareholders. And that's the form of, of capitalism that we have. And it's a more equitable form of capitalism, which I think, you know, that's, you know, that's a point. That's one perspective. But I do understand the Democrats point, right? Which is, you know, these people grind away as yeah. Walmart greeters and don't benefit from the dividends. Yeah. Again, this is about smallness and bigness. You know, people want to think of Walmart as bigness, but it's really not all that big anymore, right? Who is big? Google's big. The tech company. And is Google delivering equitable returns to its employees. Fuck yeah, it is. Every day on the hour. Absolutely. They what, have what restricted you, stock an, units. Anec- right? Anecdotally, though, we were just at Google. What did you yeah. see firsthand? I'll go I first. Mean, I'll go first. We pull into Google's office. The guy tells us where to park. We're in a Tesla. What does he offer us? Charging. Free charging. Free charging. So nice. Who pays for that? Google does. No, no, no. But that's the thing. When you live in utopia, those are consequences you don't think about. Sure. Right? You don't think about where the energy came from. You don't think about you don't think about who has to pay for it. You just you think it's fair and equitable. Let's just use it. Right? And then you're talking about delivering, you know, what do you call it to your to your employees, right? What else did you see when you walked in? Uh, I saw like Noah's Ark with a office building built inside of it. It, or a spaceship? A spaceship. Yeah. Did you did you like the coffee? No. Interesting. Coffee was disgusting. Okay. But so you all right. Still amazing. What did you it pay for? It? It, it was, was free. free. So they basically had a Starbucks, right? Yeah. Of epic proportions. Love, did you like your coffee? It was good. Okay. You guys are so Russian that you're ruining my fucking point. But mm. the point is, is that it was free charging, it was free coffee. How about the the big cafeteria that they had? It was free. Okay. You don't want to say it was good. Well, we didn't eat there. 
because it smelled bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to, will you send that to Shar? Cause uh, Shar and Rit was yeah. please. Um, um, but I, I, but it was, but it was completely free. So they're delivering, right? Your point is they're delivering tremendous value to their employees. Yeah. So all that stuff is bullshit, right? Yep. What? Right. All that stuff is bullshit saying that large corporations are not delivering value to their employees see. versus their shareholders. Right. Fuck no. Netflix is. Restricted stock. Meta is. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. It used to be options. Now it's RSUs. It's bonuses. Right. These people really have ownership in these companies and they're the ones that are benefiting in the real estate market, benefiting in crypto, benefiting in everything that's going up in America. Yeah. And who's suffering? Small business owners. Yeah. Right. And they're, they're cringing and sighing and having trouble breathing under the weight of this new paradigm. Uh, it's very, very difficult for them to understand sort of how do I lift myself up and how, get somewhere. It's like how many small business owners, we're just visiting Brad Lee in Las Vegas, right? How many business owners are similar to Brad Lee? You sit down and you're like, well, what about you? This is a successful guy. Very. Owns a software company that mm -hmm. large companies use like Cardone Enterprises. He's like, what are you unhappy about with your organization? And he goes, I just don't feel like we have the right people. And you're like, fuck. And you immediately understand yeah. that that is smallness. That right? is the smallness. Yeah. Because if he wants to hire more programmers, good luck getting them away from Google, Netflix, Box, Dropbox. I mean, the list goes on. Microsoft, you know. Yeah. So as an immigrant, right, in the 80s, immigrants came to America and they saw that a house costs 100 grand. I'm going to make 100 grand. I'm going to buy a house. I'm going to buy two uh, small businesses that were easy to start. The biggest company in America is $30 billion. I think I can build something that might be competitive with it. Imagine being an immigrant coming to America today. <laughs> you land on its shores. You better be a fucking computer programmer. Just one because job. Because if you're not and your plan is to start the greatest pizza oven place, right? A sandwich shop. Uh, or what's even a worse idea? Uh, oh yeah. You might want to be an air conditioning repair man. Mm -hmm. uh, America doesn't look anything like it did 30 or 40 years ago yeah. uh, because bigness is winning in the air conditioning space. What's happening? Private equity firms are rolling up service-based businesses. Right. So it's not like Joe Schmo's HVAC company. Uh, they've rolled up 20 of them into a single unit. And private equity isn't as stupid, right, as Google and some of these other behemoths. They're not delivering the value, right, to their employees. To employees no. no, they're delivering value to their shareholders, right? So yeah. if you're in a service-based business that's getting rolled up by private equity, um, don't think that you're going to benefit in the same respect that these workers in technology, right? Yeah. India, right, that's sending their best to America, they're, they're, there's one road right? To, to fortune. That's and it. Just the, one. And it's all technology. Yeah. That's it. And that's sad. I think it's a sad statement. I'm not saying that there should be blame placed really anywhere. Yeah. Uh, but the politicians want to place blame. They want to fight each other. They want to create gangs around this. Yeah. But this is the reality of our world. Yeah. And we've got to find a way to deal with it in a united way, right? Not in a way that brings about conflict and divide and anger and listen, let's be honest, violence. Yeah. Right. Uh, none of us have lived through violence, um, in our lives, at least not, you know, not since I left the Soviet union, even then I wasn't really too privy yeah. to violent things, but a lot of generations have lived through violence. Well, a lot good, of people outside the United States have lived through violence. This is a good segue to point five. Oh, yeah. We're talking what about violence. Let's talk about violence. We're talking about violence. Let's talk about the Killing. border. Um, there, there is a specific what example. What did Grandpa Joe say? There was a specific example of this person. I want to say that the first name was Lincoln. Love, what was the, what was the person who was murdered by an undocumented? You got to say undocumented, by the way. Not illegal. I think, you know, it's, it's the, um. Who gives a shit? I don't give a shit. I'm a legal immigrant. Yeah. Right. Um, but there was, uh, was it Lance Lincoln? Who was the, 
in the State of the Union address. It was say her name. Yeah, and that's what they that did. Marjorie Green <laughs> with the Ma with the MAGA hat. Make Argentina great uh, again. What a crazy lady. You got it for me, Liv. But yeah, uh, this uh, undocumented undocumented immigrant murders woman in Alabama. Grandpa Joe promised us that the, his bipartisan deal would hire 1,500 more border security agents and officers. Why do we need border security? Well, but who the fuck thinks that 1,500 is a lot? That sounds like a joke. Hopefully, is that per square mile? <laughs> yeah. oh, I want what? all the border... Is that just for Tijuana? I want all the border security uh. protecting me against Canadians. Uh. I think Canadians are a disgusting group of human beings, and it's... Um, they're murderers. What's the most they're disgusting rapists. about them? Huh? What's the most disgusting thing about Canadians? Um, they put, um, they the put syrup, they put, the bacon. No, it's, it's the, the, the fries with the, um, the poutine. Oh, the poutine. It's disgusting. Trying to give us cholesterol. I think it's hilarious. Which we learned about in our episode with Dr. Dave Clayton. With Dr. Dave Clayton. That was fantastic. Um, but with regard to border security, right? Mm hmm Are the Mexican people more nefarious than the Canadians? Or is it yes. that? Yes. Oh, oh, interesting. Sorry. No, it's fine. I just, I, I find it hilarious. You have a system of government, right? That allows or disallows economic prosperity, right? That it refuses to allow the democratization of economic prosperity amongst its populace, right? That's Mexico. You have a huge divide between rich and poor. That's why you need border security. There isn't that type of rift. There isn't that type of like Grand Canyon-esque divide between rich and poor in Canada. And that's why you don't need border security to the extent at, you know, at the Canadian you know, border as you do in America. But, you know, yeah. I, I, I and this all gets into like, you know, what's bigness in America today? Well, it's technology, but also pharmaceuticals. Yeah. And we have a tremendous demand in this country for pharmaceuticals. And Mexico just happens to be in the middle between our demand for pharmaceuticals. And those nice people in South America growing all those little plants. Yeah, now, that's true. Canada didn't have polar bears above it and instead had a giant field of opiates, right? <laughs> uh, and marijuana. Uh, things might be different. You know, the, those the, Canadian those terrorists. Canadians those Canadian be, terrorists. Yeah, would be driving train cars full of uh, fentanyl. But it's funny, right? Across the border. You have a porous border at our, you know, our southern border, right? It is porous. Right here. Right here in San Diego. And it's, I got to be honest with you. you know, I, uh, I read a lot. It's not the Mexicans that are coming through, right? It's like, <laughs> those guys? Like cowboys and Indians? <laughs> no. You've got, yeah. what, what's coming through the border are military-aged men. Fuck. Yeah. That's From horrible. countries that are um, at war with the United States. Venezuela. China. Do you think that's true or is that like the right wing media bullshit? No, no, it's true. It's true. It is true. Yeah. Have you gone down there to check? I have an office in Mexico. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure. Yeah. No, I think it's really scary. Um, the border, the, the border situation, specifically at our Southwest border, it's really scary. It's really yeah. scary. And the hands are tied uh, by the, um, the CBP, right? Which is, when they catch these people, right? It's they're customs not, and border patrol. Right. They're not under arrest. No. No. They they basically they index who these people are, release them into society. Catch and release. And they give them a court date. Mm. And the reality is that nobody ever shows up for their court date. And that's the issue. What sort of idiotic policy is this? Listen, you know, in in you know specifically as it relates to state law in the state of New York, when they mm -hmm. made their constitution about immigration, they said that any refugee, and I don't think they necessarily defined it, but any like political refugee that was to come into the state of New York was to get like, um, like help me with the word, but they would get like boarded. Like they would, they would have, they would get housing. They would mm -hmm. get food. And when you see, when you interview people at the southern border, right? And you're like, Adonde va? And they're like, Nueva York, right? Uh, if they're coming from a uh, Spanish-speaking country, any one of the 21 Spanish-speaking countries. Although 
right? Shout out to all my Haitian friends. Every 10 years, there is a war in Haiti and um, the U.S. has basically taken the, currently, the administration is currently taking the laissez-faire, right? The like leave it alone um, uh, attitude with regards to Haiti. We're done spending money on those people. And every year we're getting like hundreds of thousands of Haitians coming through the border. Mm. Haitians in Mexico now take the jobs of the Mexicans. No. Yeah. So in Tijuana where you had like people selling newspapers and people selling gum, people selling, you know, all sorts of tchotchkes at the border. That's all Haitians now. Wow. So in Mexico, they're like, they're stealing our jobs, <laughs> right? It's like the same bullshit you have in America. Uh, right? It's an MLM for job stealing. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's I think, a multi-level, I think it's, it's a pyramid. When, you, when uh. you hear Americans saying like the Mexicans are taking our jobs, now the Mexicans in Mexico are saying the Haitians are stealing our jobs because they have this, you have this situation where it's difficult to enter the United States, I mean, relatively speaking. Um, and so they're just basically, right, coming via boat into Mexico, right? Um, ha- Haiti's only 700 miles off the coast of the United States. It's so close. Yeah. Because it's on the same island as Puerto Rico, Cuba, which, where's Haiti at? Lev, help us out with geography. Pull up uh, Google Maps. I think it's... The, Haiti shares I, an island with someone. I thought the DR and Puerto Rico were linked. Mm. I don't know. Lev will get to it. But but I think listen, the point we, is, we right, 1,500 border security agents, That's right? not going to do anything. It's, a, it's, it's not going to do anything, but it's also, again, it's another distraction by the right and the left. Yeah. They want us to think about these things. And then you got... Uh, Joe Biden also said that last year, the murder rate saw the sharpest decrease in history and violent crime fell to one of the lowest levels in more than 50 years. Fuck you, Joe Biden. What are you talking about? Like we got cities being just destroyed by looters. What city? Right. San Francisco. What's another one. city? Uh, Chicago. Oh, hit me New with York. another one. How about Oakland? Oakland. Oh Oakland. yeah. Oakland has, op- I mean, I just saw this. Oakland has open air markets. Mm-hmm. Where you and I can come up to a gentleman Mm -hmm. standing in the middle of the street and we can ask him, excuse me, sir, Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a Louis Vuitton bag of this type? And he'll say, no, I'm sorry, we're fresh out. Mm -hmm. Uh, Give me two hours. Because I'll break into Louis Vuitton. I'll break into a Louis Vuitton boutique in the city and I'll be right back with your order. And how much does it cost? About 30%. Of the retail value. Well, no tax, of course. I'm going to message my wife. We're going to go. Yeah. We're going to no, go to let's Oakland. Get, let's get there. Yeah. It's, Lev, it's probably somewhere in Oakland where it's safe. Love, where's Haiti? Yeah, please. It's west, just east of Cuba. Interesting. But what does it share the island with? Is it Dominican Republic and Haiti? Yeah, a <laughs> Dominican Republic. Oh, look at that. Got it. The so DR, DR, the DR, DR Haiti. plus Haiti. Yeah. They have these weird, like, who else shares an island? I feel like, doesn't Cuba have, share an island with some... Very yeah. bad. I think Cuba's its own, you know, it's an yeah, island. It's the, yeah, I mean, Cayman Islands. But, I think but yeah, like, there's all this nonsense going on, right? And and yeah, I, I think we all agree that there needs to be a focus on abiding by the law, on enforcing the law. Um, we have a lot of problems with these liberal DAs in cities like Los Angeles. Um, and we do have problems at the border, but to me, these are distractions by politicians for the population, right? Sort of little trinkets go, look here, look here, everyone. Um, meanwhile, what's really happening is that gigantic corporations yeah. are starting to impact our political and economic system in ways that we may not understand. And are it's starting to really affect the population and could be leading to something really terrible down the road. And we've got to figure out how to deal with that from the right and the left. Listen, these were all great points. This is a fun episode of film. We're kind of out of time. The one thing I did want to just briefly talk about is if you nut on a f- on the ground, Ooh. then you're a murderer. And I feel like if that's, that's true, crazy. I am going to jail for my wife masturbating. About this yesterday. I'm going to go to jail for masturbating and... I, I feel like I should probably just turn myself in. But let's, 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 uh, so you, you got to do it confused. You got to do it in two minutes. What the hell is this guy talking Masturbation's about? Masturbation's illegal. And Biden did bring up some interesting is points mas- last Look night. at me. Look at me for fucking crying out loud. I don't know who you're looking at over there. I, I enjoy ma- looking at you and Lev. Don't look at Lev. He has nothing to say to you. Look at me. Is masturbation illegal? No. Masturbation is welcome, healthy, 
normal? Please continue doing it. No, not normal, but just continue doing it, right? Well, okay. Not for a married person. I, what I want to know is in Alabama, somebody like masturbated onto the ground and now they're going to go to prison. <laughs> Did I understand this correctly? <laughs> not exactly. It sounds like what happened I, is there are IVF. In. You get two minutes. Fill me in. Yeah, IVF clinics. What's IVF? Uh, in vitro fertilization. It's okay. to help folks that are having trouble inseminating no, it's, their wives. It's to help women. To help women, but, but women, women. Biological women is what you Yeah, mean. so a man and a woman can take their sperm and egg. Yeah. The sperm, what is that called? Cum. Um, <laughs> the cum, uh, what does it do to the egg? Fertilizes it. It fertilizes it, right? And, and then, then we're talking take, about IVF. Yeah, and then they take this fertilized egg, plant it inside of the woman who has a uterus. Gotcha. Just to be and, clear. And she has a baby. Okay. I right? like it. And otherwise, she may never have been able to have children. Okay. Seems like a wonderful thing. Okay. Right? Yeah. Right? Increases the population of the world, which is, you know, declining in a lot of places. You want the cum to be sticky. And yeah, you want to get, get that real sticky stuff. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Sometimes mine isn't sticky. And I, I always thought it had to do with like the sucrose or whatever. Not that I'm tasting it, but continue. Uh, how it does cum taste? I don't know. I don't know. Ask, ask, I think. Ask, the, <laughs> ask, the opinions ask my bathroom that. floor. <laughs> but continue. Yeah. And so apparently there's some kind of issue going on that they said was tied to Roe v. Wade being overturned. Okay. That somebody spilled the cum inside of one of these IVF clinics. And by cum, we mean the fertilized eggs that had been fertilized by semen from the partner of, of the woman. Now, Roe v. Wade has changed things around so that a fertilized egg is now considered a human, apparently. Okay, gotcha. And so if that's the case, then spilling these humans. things, these humans, because is murder. The, because the humans died. You just killed them all. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. So And if you're the, one of the people that has one of those fertilized eggs, you're probably really pissed. Yeah. And, and some backwards motherfuckers are trying to charge the people involved inside these IBF clinics mm -hmm. with murder. Now, I'm not clear whether this is a real criminal issue or this is some sort of civil issue, mm -hmm. right? Because it doesn't seem like DAs would really get involved in this yeah. unless they're fucking loony. Yeah. Uh, but nonetheless, this is a debate happening around the United States of America. It's interesting. And Lev, you're going to have to look at the case. What was the case recently in 2023? And I know we're out of time where there was a kid who shot a bunch of people and murdered a bunch of people. And Nuvalde? Was it Nuvalde? Was that guy? Yeah, I think so. And the parents are now being prosecuted. Oh, that's a different one. Is that different? Okay. Yeah. Where the parents one. were somehow complicit. Complicit. Like yeah. they knew about it and they didn't do anything. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't. They Nuvalde. encouraged him, right? They, encouraged they, they, him? I think they provided some weapons. Really? Yeah, that's another topic. A t another topic for another. It just reminds me of yeah. the... Well... And Joe Biden talked a lot about the NRA versus Trump's approach to the NRA last night. Really? Yeah. I didn't even bring that up. Yeah. Well, we don't know. We're out of time. Yeah. But I think, you know, if you're at home and you're masturbating, I want you to think about one thing when you're masturbating, which is not what's on tubegalore.com. <laughs> but I think if you, you know, my point is if you're masturbating at home, I want you to think about something real serious, which is what Dean just said, which is, you know, you need to come. And Kamala Harris would say, don't come. Don't come. Don't come. But if you do need to come, is it worth going to jail for murder? I think we can end it there. And on that bombshell. We'll see you next time. Adios. Thank you.